Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to show you how to find the center of gravity of the parabolic spandrel. Basically what it is, it's a parabolic equation, y equals k times x squared, and we cut it off at some distance, x equals a, and we let it go to some height, y equals h, and then we want to find the center of mass or center of gravity of this portion right here. We can, of course, imagine that it's somewhere in this region. The best way to do that is to take a small little slice of this, and what we're going to do first is find the center of mass in the y direction. So what we're going to find is we're going to find y bar, which is a y center mass, which is equal to the x, or I should say the y coordinate of the center mass of this object right here, and that's equal to the integral of the center mass of the small little piece, which would be right in the middle right there in the y direction. This should be like a squiggly line times the area and I should say the d area, so the area of that little slice, which is the little d area. Remember, if this is a thin plate with even thickness and even density, we can go ahead and use the area instead of the mass of this, of this object. And then we divide this by the integral of all the little da's. Now, what is the da in this case? Well, the width here would be little dx, and the height would be a y. So the da is actually a y dx. So this becomes equal to the integral of... And we can also find the y tilde. In other words, we can find the center mass of this little piece, which is halfway up the, uh, uh, the distance from here to there, which is y divided by 2 times dA. dA would be y times dx. And divide the whole thing by the integral of dA, which is y times dx. At this point, we still can integrate it because we have the variable y, and then we have a differential dx. So we have to change the y to a dx. Coming back over here, we realize that y is equal to kx squared, so if we square both sides, we get y squared is equal to k squared times x to the fourth power, and we can go ahead and put that in here in the numerator, and for y, we simply can replace that by k times x squared. So this becomes equal to, we can factor out a one-half and a k squared, so we have a one-half k squared times the integral of, instead of y squared, we write x to the fourth, times dx and divide it by, so y would be k times x squared, so we take the k out of the integral sign and we have x squared times dx. Now we want to integrate this all the way from 0, from x equals 0 to x equals a. So from 0 to a and from 0 to a. And that should give us the center of mass or the center of gravity in the y direction of that parabolic spandrel. k and k squared, so we can go ahead and cancel that out. Now we'll integrate. This is equal to x to the fifth power over 5, and we can't forget the 1 half k, so it is equal to 1 half k times x to the fifth over 5, evaluated from 0 to a, divided by, and in the denominator we get uh, simply x cubed over 3, evaluated from 0 to a, Notice that when we plug in the, the 0 for the limit, we get 0, so we don't have to worry about it. We only have to plug in the a, so this is equal to 1 half k a to the fifth over 5 divided by a to the third over 3. Now we simplify, simplify this algebraically. Of course, we have a to the fifth here, a cubed here, so this disappears, and this becomes a to the second power. We have 1 half times 150 is 1 tenth. We divide by 1 over 3. That means that 3 goes to the numerator. So this becomes 3 tenths k times a squared. And that would be the proper answer. However, we may want to write it in different terms since this is in the y direction. And we have, uh, in the y direction, we have the height of the spandrel being equal to h. Well, we can also say if we plug in an a and we plug in an h into this equation, we can then say that h is equal to k times a squared, or instead of writing a squared, a squared, we could write h divided by k. When we do that over here, this is equal to 3 over 10 times k. Instead of a squared, we can write h over k. Now the k's cancel out, and finally we can see that this is equal to 3 tenths times the height of the spandrel. And that would be the center of mass or the center of gravity, at least the y-coordinate of the center of gravity of the spandrel right here.
Now let's try to do the same thing for the x-coordinate. Now for the x-coordinate, we need to have a little slice that looks like this. There's our little slice, and that would be the center of mass. So let's call that x tilde, call this here, this is y tilde. That is just what, I'm, what I call the center of mass, or the x and the y-coordinate of center mass of each of these little strips. Now we're going to find the center mass on the x-direction. This is equal to the integral of the center mass of the little piece right there, the x-coordinate of the center mass, times the dA, divided by the integral of the dA. The limits are going to be, since we're integrating now in the x, uh, well, I'm not going to say that yet. Let me continue here and develop a little bit more. And also let me draw a little line here so we don't get confused with what we've done so far. To find this location right here, that is the halfway point between these two, to find the halfway point between these two, we have to take uh, this plus this divided by 2. So we take the large distance, we add that to that the small distance divided by 2, that gives us the halfway point between those two. That means we take A plus X, X would be the point on the graph right here, so A plus X divided by 2, that would be the center of mass of that strip right here in the X direction. And we multiply that times the dA, the dA would be the small little width, which is dy, times the length, so it would be dy times the length, which would be the far distance minus the close distance. The far distance is a, and the close distance is x. Now what we have here is we have the integral of the x-coordinate of the center mass of the strip, which is a plus x divided by 2. The dA would be the width dy times the length, which is a minus x. And in the denominator, it would be the integral of the area, which would be the, the length here, that would be a minus x times dy. I know I have these reversed in order, but that doesn't really matter. And so if we're going to be integrating in the y direction, that would be from 0 to h. So from 0 to h and from 0 to h. The reason why I think we're going to integrate this in the y direction is because we have y differentials, and we just have to somehow convert the x's into y's using this relationship right there. I'm going to factor out a one-half in the numerator and then multiply these two and see what we get. This is equal to one-half times a plus x times a minus x gives me a squared minus x squared times dy, integrating from 0 to h, divided by the denominator will simply be the integral of a minus x times dy. Now we want to replace uh, x squared for what x squared is equal to in terms of this equation right here. We can say that x squared is equal to y divided by k. So I can go ahead and plug that in here. And here I have to take the square root of y divided by k and plug that in there. And then we can go ahead and integrate. So this is equal to um, 1 half times the integral of a squared minus, instead of x squared, I'll write y over k and the whole thing times dy, integrated from 0 to h. And in the denominator, here I have the integral from 0 to h of a minus, instead of x, I'm going to write y over k, but the square root of that, so the square root of y over the square root of k, and the whole thing times dy. Now I'm able to integrate both of those integrals and see what we get. So this is equal to one-half times a squared y minus, that would be y squared over 2k, evaluated, and that would be parentheses here because one-half times the whole thing, and that would be from 0 to h. And in the denominator, I get a times y minus, that would be y to the one-half, that would there, therefore integrated be y to the three-halves, divided by three-halves times the square root of k, evaluated from 0 to h. Now I can continue over here. I hope I have enough board space to finish this up. We have the x-coordinate of the center mass is equal to. In the numerator, when we plug in h for y, we get 1 half times a square h minus and for y squared, we're going to plug in h, so we get h squared divided by 2k 
and divide that by the denominator. Of course, we don't have to plug in zero because that we get zero in the numerator. And then we plug in the limit in the denominator, we get eight times h minus h to the 3 halves divided by 3 over 2 times the square root of k. Now we have to simplify that. Also remember that we have h over k can be simplified into a squared. I have an h squared over k, so h over k becomes a squared, so this cannot be written as 1 half times a squared h minus, and one of the h's divided by k will be a squared, so it would be 1 half a squared times h, because I have an h left, and now notice that the terms are similar, the numerator divided by, and in the denominator, I can write h as, hmm, yes, I think I can write h as a squared k. I'm going to do that here. So a squared times k instead of h, this becomes a times a squared k, that would be a, a cubed k minus, and here I have h to the 3 halves, so h to the 3 halves, let's write that here, h to the 3 halves is equal to k to the 3 halves times a cubed. So we can replace h to the 3 halves by k to the 3 halves times a cubed, and divide by 3 halves, same as multiplying times 2 thirds, that's 2 thirds times k to the 3 halves, a cubed, divided by the square root of k. And then of course the k to the 3 halves divided by square root of k simply becomes k, and then you can see that the terms in the denominator becomes the same as well. In the numerator we have a squared h minus a half a squared h times a half, that would be one quarter a squared h in the numerator. In the denominator, notice that the square root of k is going to make that simply k to the first power. Now we have a cubed times k minus two thirds a cubed times k, that gives us one-third, and that doesn't look like a three there, one-third a cubed times k. Now we're getting close. One-fourth divided by one-third is three-quarters, so this would be equal to three-quarters. a squared divided by a cubed, this cancels out, that goes away, so we have h divided by a times k. And now all we have to do is find a way to make it a little bit simpler than that. h divided by k can be written as a squared. This can then be written as 3 quarters times a squared divided by a. Finally, this is equal to 3 quarters times a. And that would be then the x-coordinate, because that's what we're looking for, the x-coordinate of the center mass of this parabolic spandrel. We have the y-coordinate. We have the x-coordinate, so finally, if I can find a little bit of space, maybe right over here, I can then say that the, the x, y coordinates of the center mass is equal to, the x-coordinate would be 3 quarters a, the y-coordinate would be 3 tenths h. And that's how we find the center mass of the parabolic spandrel. It's not a quick problem, but you can see if you just go slowly and if you work out each problem uh, carefully and if you make sure you then get the relationships between H, K and A, then you can go ahead and simplify it to those terms. That's how it's done.